Hi, welcome back to Procreate Basics. I'm Russ Abbott, and this is Tattoo Smart's free series on the basics of Procreate for tattoo design. This course is several videos long, and you're jumping in right in the middle. So if this is the first video you're seeing, go back on our channel and look for the other videos so you can catch up to where we are now. Now, we are going to take a quick detour over and talk about all of the ways that we can use Procreate to save a little bit more time in our process. So even if you already know how Procreate works, there are some things here in this tutorial that are going to be game changing for you. And so stick around and find out what you don't know already. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about is gestures. Now we use gestures in Procreate to do things that we can probably do some other way. Somewhere hidden in the menus is a way to do what we want to do but we like to work faster. So learning a few of the most useful gestures is going to save you a lot of time. Now there's two gestures that I use constantly in Procreate. The first is going to be two finger tap to undo, which looks like this, two finger tap, and then three finger tap to redo. So let's say you have a lot of stuff on your screen and you wanna get rid of everything. So you use three fingers, you tap and scrub three finger tap and scrub. Now, three fingers scrub down will bring up this quick menu here, which has cut, copy, copy all, duplicate, cut and paste, and paste. I use cut, copy, paste all the time, especially in the sketch phase of my drawing. So I found that knowing where this is and knowing how to get to this really quickly, it saves me a lot of time. If you don't remember this gesture, you can get back to all of that by clicking on this wrench and going to add and then you'll see cut copy copy canvas and paste all right there so it takes a little bit more time to get there but you can get there all the same now finally you can pinch to zoom rotate all just by using two fingers that's really intuitive super easy if there's a color somewhere in your design that you want to grab so that you can choose a color that's already in there you just hold one finger down until this color picker comes up and you can select the color and then that color will appear here. If you want to get back to the color you were just using, just tap and hold the color puck and it will change back to the previous color selected. There you have it. That's all the gestures that I personally use all the time in Procreate. If you want to learn more about gestures, there's a lot more that you can learn to do, but these are the ones that I find the most useful. Now let's look at the selection tool. Tap the S icon and it brings up this menu. You have a few options here from automatic, freehand, rectangle, or ellipse. We learned earlier about how we can use automatic to select inside of a line layer that we have set to reference. So if you recall, our outline layer here is set to reference, which you can access here. So our line layer is set to reference. And now if we're on a different layer, the selection tool set to automatic will allow us to select areas inside here, which will then allow us to color inside of only those areas. Another option that we have is to tap color fill. So now when we tap, it just automatically fills with a color that we have selected here. Super useful. We also have freehand, which will allow us to draw any shape that we want to make a selection out of. And with color fill on, it just automatically fills. With color fill off, we just have a selection that we can color in later. Of course, we also have rectangle for a rectangular selection and ellipse for an ellipse shape selection. And that's pretty much everything that I commonly use in the selection menu, but I'm sure there's a lot more you can learn about the rest of it. Now, after you've made a selection, let's say we want to select something from our line drawing here. Let's say we want to, let's say we want to quickly move this around. So you can select this part and then tap the transform button. This is it going to bring up the transform menu, which also has some options such as freeform, which lets you just totally go crazy, uniform, which allows you to scale it up and down or rotate it using that little green handle. Distort, another weird one. And finally warp, which is probably the coolest of all because you can just grab all these different points and start to pull 
you're drawing around, like sculpting with clay. So I use these quite a bit. You also have, you can reset back to the beginning there. You also have flip horizontal, you have flip vertical, rotate 45 degrees, that's fun. And that's about it. Now, one thing that you'll want to make sure of, and this is a huge, huge tip, so don't forget about this. One thing you want to make sure of is when you are in this transformation menu, you see this here, it says bicubic. We want to make sure that it does not say something other than bicubic, like it might say nearest, or it might say bilinear, but we want it to say bicubic. And the reason that we want it to say bicubic is if we set this to nearest neighbor, for example. Let me show you what can happen, especially to outlines. If you make transformations, you change things around, you rotate things, you move it around, you do whatever you do. What's going to happen is the quality of the line work is going to get degraded by doing that. And with it set to nearest neighbor, it's really bad. This looks totally terrible, and I would never, ever want to work with that. It's just ruining my line art. So, to back that up, let's change this back to bicubic, and I'll show you the difference now. With it set to bicubic, you can do all the same things. And it's still kind of bad, but it's not nearly as bad as it was before. It's going to be way cleaner that way. So remember that. Keep that set to bicubic. If it's not currently set to bicubic, that could be the reason that you've really hated all of your outline transformations you've done in the past. So helpful tip. Ah, let's talk about quick shape. So quick shape, super, super useful update from Procreate a couple of years ago. With quick shape, you can draw a straight line or draw your version of a straight line. Like your, your line doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And just hold for a moment and it'll snap to a straight line and you can move it around when you finally lift come up here and you can tap this and you get these two little blue pucks on the end that allow you to move it around if you want to and just tap that and you're done so now you've got a straight line just like having a ruler that it's just way more intuitive than a ruler right let's try this with an oval look at that after you let go, tap here, now you can edit. Tap and you're done. Let's try it with a circle. It's still kind of an oval, but if you tap the screen, it turns into a perfect circle. Tap this and you can edit. Let's see, can we do a square? Pretty close, let's see if that finger trick works. Yeah, perfect square, there you go. So that's super useful quick shape. And with that, I honestly think that's everything that you need to know. There's so much more that you could learn and you will learn. But right now, this is all about getting you up to speed with all of the things that a tattoo artist must use in order to quickly work with Procreate. And I think we're starting to accomplish that. So if this video brought you great value, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Share this with a friend that you think will find it useful. Don't miss the free resources we're giving away, link in the description, which includes the free brush set that I'm using throughout this tutorial series, as well as the Procreate color palettes that I've used. Didn't use any of them in this video today, but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to tell you about this awesome thing you can get. My name is Russ Abbott. I'll be back soon with another video. We'll see you then.